Brooklyn Independent Television. As winter trudges on, many of us are feeling the sting of high energy bills. But some people in Brooklyn are building and renovating in a way that reduces the energy need for heating and cooling by as much as 90%. It's called the passive house method, and a few such projects recently opened their doors to the public for the annual Passive House Days event. So today, like last year, the Passive House community in New York, actually all over the world, has a weekend of um, open houses to introduce to the other architects and also the public uh, what is Passive House. Passive House is an approach to new construction and building renovation that sort of rigorously addresses the um, operational energy use of the building to seek radical reductions in the energy demand for things like heating it and cooling it. If you can reduce the heating demand to such a low level, you can, by and large, heat the building passively with the people in it, with the lighting, with the appliances that you're doing in your normal everyday life. It's really trying to lift energy efficiency levels to what's needed to be realistic in dealing with climate change. So I was at the Passive House event last year and I learned a lot. So of course I want to share the knowledge we gained now in that year actually working on one. I became interested in the Passive House movement basically by doing some research online. And today I saw there was an open house in the area and I thought it would be a great opportunity to visit for a couple days and see a lot of the passive house and um, gain more information. Uh, as you can see, the, the tubes that are hanging here throughout the house, that's a Zender uh, ventilation system. The most important aspect for me is a very comfortable home to live in, very energy efficient home to live in, something that'll save money over the long term and be very healthy for me and my family. There's basically a few fundamental principles in Passive House in the construction and how you approach it. There's nothing terribly radical in and of themselves. They're all building components or approaches that have been sort of tried and true over the decades. One is having continuous insulation around the building, and this means all sides, the roof, the ground plane, all four walls. You have a continuous airtight layer because a tremendous amount of energy is lost through just air leaks. And because we're airtight and the functioning of the whole building really revolves on having good indoor air, we have a continuous ventilation system. These other two are going to go through the roof and be installed there. One's supply, one's return. And then these are the filters that go in and out of the machine. The fresh air that's coming in is filtered before it enters the building. So in many conditions, like in the urban setting we're in, the air inside the building is going to be much cleaner, dust-free, allergen-free, um, soot-free environment than the outside. There was a lot of learning costs, but cost itself, probably 5% more, but it's an investment. So you're recouping your costs as part of the investment by uh, reducing your energy use people say 80% and I have less equipment in the building so I have less maintenance, I have less pipes, less moving parts, that's all cost in the future. This building was sort of a perfect storm of acquiring it for a price where we felt like there was enough room that if it took longer or if we had to redo something that we could still get it done. And I just, I think it's just, it's quality construction done to the extreme and it's really how every building should be built. So it just, it, it made a lot of sense. The interest has been phenomenal. We had 140 people at our first open house. After three weeks, we had three units with accepted offers. That was the only three units that we released. We've now released our lower duplex. We have a lot of interest of that. So it, it's been unbelievable. It's unfortunate that there's not enough product to meet the demand. Um, you know, even at a lower price point. I think once people understand what this is, everybody's gonna demand that you know, they have a building that meets those standards. Brooklyn is an environment where people expect tangible results or returns. And I think Passive House is the most tangible green construction.
Brooklyn's sort of become the hub for Passive House. Uh, I think there's more projects in Brooklyn that are being built to Passive House than anywhere else in the country. Brooklyn has lots of historic neighborhoods, so it's of course key that we mix these two important aspects of buildings. You want to preserve the Brooklyn brownstone. You want to create more comfortable environments with, uh, with these passive houses. And you want to be energy efficient. I mean, the city is trying to be more energy efficient and Brooklyn can do a lot because there's quite a bit of renovation still can happen. Just to make the attempt, I think, is important. And that's what I wanted to reach, that I, I'm, I'm creating a more comfortable and more energy efficient building. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.